What had happened was. What had happened was. What is up? Thank you guys so much for tuning into the uh, first episode in a long ass time. I don't even remember the last time I uh, recorded, honestly, an episode that wasn't football related. And uh, that's completely my fault. But, uh, you know, Merry Christmas. Coming up on the new year, if you guys are listening to this, uh, the day it's released, it is, uh, what, December the 20th? I don't even know what fucking day it is. 27th. Most likely people will be listening to this on the 28th, Friday. Um, well, I hope anyway people will be listening to it. Um, I know I've lost quite a few listeners because I, I genuinely, it's been, had to have been months, months, months. There are dozens of us left that listen to you, Mike, they say, um, and I appreciate that. Uh, I, know, I know that the football is really a one trick pony. Like there's not a, a very broad, uh, swath of my listeners that really liked the football. I know there's obviously a huge following. I fucking see the NFL's ratings. So I know a lot of people watch football and a lot of people listen to football content, but a lot of people that listen to my podcast were not huge fans of uh, listening to me, um, you know, bullshit about NFL picks that I really, I did well, don't get me wrong, I, I was over 500 by about 25, 30 games, I have one more week left this weekend, uh, I'm not going to do the playoffs because I want to get back into doing this regularly, and one of the main reasons I want to get back into doing this regularly is that on uh, January 21st, I'm going to be doing, um, taking part in Mooncat Comedy's uh, Funniest Person on Del Marva stand-up little special. They're also having a um, stand-up session, uh, open mic night. December 30th, Sunday, I believe at the Rehoboth Ale House. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it there because Lindsay has to work. We'll see uh, if that's going to work out or not. If it does work out, it'll be last minute. I'll let everyone know. Uh, she obviously shoot something on Facebook. Because uh, I do want to get out there and get a little bit of stage time before I just go up there. It's been fucking shit. 10, 12 years since the last time I was on stage doing comedy. Um, but it is something that I, I really enjoy doing. It's not something I'm, I'm trying to get famous doing. It's not something I'm trying to do for a living. I like teaching. I like what I do. Do I wish I were a millionaire for doing it? Yes. But unfortunately, they don't pay teachers millions quite yet at this point. Um, if they did, though, I might not have, uh, you know, annoyed my, my daughter that this this Christmas. So <laughs> Christmas was really awesome. I don't know if you guys uh, see me on Facebook, but and Instagram, my daughter was like super excited about two or three presents, but I caught one picture where she was just really, really excited about this stupid fucking pillow that you got to like color and she wanted it and she got it. So she was really excited to see that she got the pillow. It's called like a dream pillow or something. You're supposed to like write. So you color the pillow however you want it. And then like you uh, write like, like some of your dreams and you slip it inside the pillow and it's supposed to help make them come true. Anyway, she was really jacked up, really excited, looked really grateful. And if you were to just look at that Instagram and that Facebook post, you would think, oh, that's cute. Mike's kids are really, really grateful for what they get. They're not shitty. Uh, they're not rotten. And, and you'd be wrong because I fucking, I, you know, I gotta, I gotta, can't lie to you here. I, I have to tell you the truth, the true story. I lost my shit a little bit today um, because it's now, what, three days removed from Christmas and two days removed from Christmas, the 27th. Why do I think it's the 28th? I don't know because I'm off for the next week and a half and I don't fucking keep track of days. Am I the only degenerate that if I don't have to work or I don't have a real reason to count days, like I just completely fucking lose track of them? Didn't realize it was Thursday. Didn't realize it was 27th, but I do have to send an email um, out tomorrow to our builder because we are uh, changing up the siding uh, idea that we had. Well, we haven't finalized anything yet, but we kind of told her we were thinking about going with white. Um, started looking at some other options, and, and the other options actually won out that battle. Uh, bought some samples and shit, so we're going to go with the sage brook uh, on, the, on the bottom, and then a board and batten, which is the style, and then the color is thistle on the top. So it should be like a, like a greenish-gray kind of color, and then with white white trim uh should be really nice we're really excited we are supposed to be breaking ground here in the next week or two it's i did not realize that this process was going to take fucking forever um i should have known it was going to be it's not just goddamn oh it's just some wooden nails like that's what i thought i genuinely thought it's just wooden nails how long can it take i thought it would take maybe three months for this whole fucking process i knew it would take longer than that but you know what i'm saying like how hard can it be you just you look at the blueprint you fucking hammer some shit together Put some Tyvek on it and call it a day. Go home. I don't need a. I don't need it to withstand a hurricane. Just withstand everyday winds. You know, I, I, if it blows away in a hurricane, I'm sure I got house insurance for that. But um, no, I, I I definitely didn't anticipate. I think it was like five weeks to get the permits from the county, uh, the building permits. We already had the septic permits, so it's just been like one little baby step after another. Now, what I'm told is that once we break ground. 
it starts to move much, much faster. Uh, so I'm, I am hoping that that, that is the case because we should be breaking around here in the next couple of weeks, getting the foundation put in, um, and then, you know, getting the house enclosed, hopefully before the weather gets too bad, because that's kind of the hurdle we're going to face right now is as long as the weather is not dog shit, we should be fine. But you know, uh, Mother Nature does what the fuck she wants to do. It's, it's like 60 degrees on Christmas. It'll be fucking 12 degrees on Easter because I'm trying to build a house. And, and if there is a God, he fucking hates me for not believing in him. Um, like seven-year-olds only marginally believe in Santa Claus, apparently. Which I don't know when that's coming up, but my daughter's six and she fully fucking believes. There's no, it's not even, like, she hasn't even, you know, oscillated. It's not even been any questions like, wait a minute, all the wrapping paper is the same as the shit you gave our cousins like it's in your handwriting like none, none of that it's not even oscillating a bit maybe I'm raising an idiot I don't know but uh but she hasn't um you know put two and two together that wait there's some way too many dots that, that connect here that say that that's not the case but she's probably gonna walk in the fucking door right now and I'm gonna ruin it for live and living color I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what had happened to this podcast no uh she's not she better not you get to hear me yell at her again because that's what I did. So that's where I was. That's where I started with this whole thing. Uh, so, yeah, so it's about two days removed from Christmas uh, when we were opening gifts at my in-laws house last night. So we had um, Christmas, like Christmas Eve dinner on my birthday. Then we had Christmas dinner um, then. So it was like Christmas Eve, Christmas dinner kind of combo for my mom, my dad, my brother, uh, my sister-in-law. They came over. Then Christmas Eve. We didn't really do much Christmas Day. Lindsay had to work. Um, then the day after Christmas, Lindsay had to work, but we went to her mom's for a little like family Christmas thing. Now her mom's having the cousins over again tomorrow, which will be Friday the 28th, uh, when you're probably listening to this, so today. So I've been fucking all over the place. Um, not, I've not been fucking all over the place. That has not been happening. My wife's had quite a, quite a bit of work lately. She worked three days in a row, so there was no, no none of that taking, taking place. Um, after those 12-hour shifts, the last thing she wants to deal with is me rubbing on her tits. And uh, she's not putting up with that. And I don't blame her because, uh, you know, I've never been too tired because I'm a guy and I've got a penis and balls. But I get that as a lady. As a lady, sometimes you got to be in the mood. It's more emotional. It's, it's not just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It's, I just want to be appreciated and loved. And I want you to, f- I, I want to feel like it's not just anybody. Like, it's just special with me. I don't know. That was not a direct quote from my wife. That was just an amalgam of the ladies I've, uh, I've heard say things before about sex. I don't want anyone to think that was a direct quote from, from Lindsay. Not that she listens to this, so I don't really care. I can I can trash her on here. She'll never even know because she don't listen. Uh, we're, okay, so eventually we're going to get back to Sloan. Okay, so Sloan, we're a couple days removed from Christmas, and she comes up to me and is like, you said that I had another gift to open, which I didn't. I basically told her that you forgot to open all of your gifts at my mom's last night. Uh, so last night we opened the gifts from her, my my mother-in-law and father-in-law and she forgot to open one whatever in the hullabaloo uh she forgot to open one it was like underneath a bunch of wrapping paper i noticed it when we were packing up i put it in the bag so let's go you forgot to open a gift you can open it tomorrow so she comes up to me today she opens one she opens it it was like soap and a loofah really cool little personally designed soap like everything's so personal now like it's fucking nuts to me like you can get personalized cutting board personalized soap personalized fucking toilet paper i don't know if if you can get it it's personalized i even saw someone got on facebook this was actually pretty cool like the um the star positioning on the day like your kid was born or the day you got engaged or married or whatever it was, you can get like the star positioning for that point in time in the sky uh, at that particular like longitude and latitude. So let's say you got engaged at Disneyland and you're a fucking weirdo that does that. Um, sorry for any listeners who did that, but a little weird. Um, you could get the sky over Disneyland. That that happened to be what happened to be that day. So I think it's a pretty cool little memory, um, you know, going on there. So it's just everything so personal. Anyway. What my personal story is that fucking Sloan then comes up to me after she opened it and she was like, what? That's it? It was just soap? Um, Is there anything else for me to open? And I, for whatever reason, I lost my fucking mind. I don't know why, like, or what about her comment put me over the edge, but I I lost my mind and I I really do still a little bit feel bad about it because I made her feel like shit. Um, And that wasn't my intention. It was like, you're... All, all you kids do is you want more, more, more. Every fucking day is Christmas for you. Why do you think that there's other kids? They don't get anything under the tree. And you're whining because you didn't get 100 gifts. You only got 95 gifts. I don't know how many gifts she got, but I guesstimated. I guesstimated 95 between my my parents, my wife's parents, and then us. It had to be close to 60 or 70. No bullshit. And it, 
then the fact that she still had the nerve to fucking whine like it wasn't enough. I lost my mind. So I was like, you know what? Next year, I'm getting you one present. I'm getting you a hundred piece puzzle and I'm going to wrap every fucking piece individually and then we'll see if you're grateful because you'll open every present. It'll be one little piece of a puzzle and then the last one will be the box and your job will be to put all the pieces back in the box and we'll see if you're grateful then. And looking back, it sounds absolutely ridiculous and insane to say to a, a six-year-old who probably was just being curious like hey is there anything else for me to open but no i lost my shit i took it as an insult and then i even went so far as to make like i wrap the gifts i don't even wrap the fucking gifts i don't know why i i like felt like i wasted my time my wife did all the wrapping i did i didn't do shit i got to eat a couple bites of carrots a couple bites of cookies that was my contribution to to the Christmas at, at the houses here. Like, it's not like I was in there slaving over, like, some gifts or I was going to Target or I was having to, to check here, check there. No, I just fucking gave my wife uh, the fucking credit card. She makes more money than me, so it's not like it's like I was like, yeah, baby, here, spend my money. More don't, don't spend it all in one place. No, I just was like, you know what, I don't even, because my wife's, she's good with money she's much better than me so she's always like hey can i spend this much or hey can i spend that or spend this or spend that so for christmas i pretty much sold her like carte blanche like no don't even ask me just fucking get whatever you want to get the kids it'll all work out so um and and we did that and i felt like she did a really good job and and everything was nice and nicely done and we're not in our own house so we we wanted the kids to have like feel some sort of way and like feel special on Christmas because like it's different when you're not in your own house. You just you don't want them to feel like they got shortchanged or gypped or whatever. So we really went out of our way to make sure that that they didn't. And then for her to be like, "Oh, is there anything else for me to open?" There was only soap today. I wanted to. I was gonna fucking throw her head through a wall. But I figured the better thing to do would be to make her feel like a ungrateful piece of shit. And I succeeded because she's been in the mood all day ever since. She's just been like really moody and leave me alone and I'm staying in my room all day. Whatever. Fucking apparently I'm just going to have to shell out some bucks for that therapy bill when I get old. When I get older. When she gets older. I'm already fucking old. 35. Had a birthday since I last did a podcast. Happy birthday to me. Actually, it was a really nice birthday. I'm not going to lie. Um, Lindsay and I got to get out for the night. We went over. Like, we didn't go far. We did a little staycation, so to speak. We went to Shuckers in Georgetown. They fucking closed in the middle of a football game. Ravens Chargers are on. Uh, they had a band playing, which wasn't a band. By the way, if you're going to call yourself a band, be a fucking band. If you're going to be a karaoke singer, be a karaoke singer. So we're at Shuckers. Uh, it was Thursday, Saturday night because the, uh, the Ravens and Chargers were on, which the fucking... Raven surprised the hell out of me. But this isn't a football podcast. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about Lamar Jackson for and Phillip Rivers? Does anybody give a fuck? No. Well, a little bit, maybe. But Lamar Jackson looked good. Phillip Rivers, I thought, was going to lose his goddamn mind. Probably because he's got another kid on the way and he needs that playoff bonus. I don't think that guy... He's nine, nine fucking kids. I know he's super religious, and I don't know why, just for the for the video, I showed like nine on my fingers. Like, you fuckers don't know how to count to nine, so you needed my fingers. Nine. Nine kids. No condoms. He's, like, super religious, so he doesn't believe in birth control. But at some point, like, you got to, like, look up to the man in the sky and be like, dog, love you and all, and I'm still keep coming to church on Sunday, and I'm going to tithe, and I'm going to be a good human on the planet, and I'm going to say, gosh darn it, instead of God damn it. I promise I'll do all those things, but I'm going to get a vasectomy, and I'm going to wrap my dick up. I have nine fucking kids. Like, he can play pretty much. If he has another kid, he'll be able to play five-on-five basketball. He already can if he plays. Shit, what am I talking about? You got nine kids. You got him. That's ten. He can play five-on-five basketball. I mean, granted, one of them's not born yet, and I think that's like... I know that some Republicans think that it's already a person, so fuck it. Put it a point guard. Put a little fetus at point guard. He's a fucking human already, according to some states. Just still fucking name him Philly Fetus. I don't know. Fucking get him out there. He's got a sick dribble. Fucking looks like a little decrepit fucking pear. I don't know. Put him, put him at point. He can dish it out. He can dish the rock. He's a human too, you know. That's murder if you get rid of him in the womb. Um, no, I don't want to get into abortion. That's too heavy. It's, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Not the most depressing time of the year. Where, where eight-year-old Guatemalans are dying at the border while we fucking stuff our faces with extra store-bought items and goddamn dinners and family dinners and how wonderful things are. And just eight-year-old Guatemalans fucking dropping dead at the border trying to cross over. Nothing shitty about that. We're, we're, you know, we're we're going strong here. USA all the way. Consumerism, capitalism have taken over our house. That's why we yell at our kids. Hey, honey, we got your horsey. 
Okay, so you want to show the, the, the podcast viewers a horse? For those of you that are listening, this is not going to be very exciting. But for those of you that are watching, Sloan got like a uh, mini, like a horse for one of her, I don't know, American Girl dolls or Art Tradition dolls or whatever it is. And, and here it is. What's its name? You haven't named it yet? What do you think you're going to name it? Horsey? It's pretty original. I think you should name it uh, Gallop. Trotter? Hoofsies? Bella? Bella? Okay, I like it. What about uh something like uh damsel? No. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. That was a hard pass on that one. Oh man, all right, fifteen minutes in. Where are we gonna go with this one here? I got lost my train of thought. <laughs> you like that? Uh if, yeah, I obviously you guys can't see this, but um I uh don't have my setup here because I'm at my parents' house and uh Lindsay bought the kids um, like these uh, lunch trays slash art trays for uh, for Christmas, and they're really cool. Actually, like they're like almost like a, a lap tray. If you were, if you could imagine, like breakfast in bed, think about that. But instead of oh, okay, I'm sorry, Santa got it. I, here I fucking go. See, I told you I'm going. <laughs> now, we always have Max come in anyway. Um, Lizzie got the kids a uh, like imagine a breakfast in bed tray, and uh, but they're a little deeper than that. So like the the drink pocket thing can double as a drink holder, but also like a paintbrush holder, or a crayon holder, or a marker holder, and they're really really cool. The reason she was laughing at me is because I'm using it as like uh, I have my laptop on it as opposed to just on my lap killing all my sperm, even though I've already had a vasectomy. So it doesn't matter. I can just keep a laptop on my dick for days. It doesn't harm me. Just right on there. Keep cook cook my testes. I got some shooting blanks, which I still don't understand how the vasectomy works. We haven't had another kid, so I'm assuming it worked. Um, but like, I still ejaculate, but there's nothing in there. So I'm guessing maybe there's two different like lines, like one for the ejaculate and then one for the sperm, and they just snip the sperm one. I, I should probably know my male anatomy a little better. Does anyone out there know? How that works? Is there one? Is there like a two tube factory? Or is because I always imagined it was a one tube, not a two tube. But now that I think about it, it's got to be a two tube. Because if they just snip off the one, I wouldn't even be able to come at all. It'd be like <laughs> like an old fucking old lady fart. Just <laughs> um, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. It's got to be two tubes. I'm gonna have to look this up at some point. Let's see. Do the sperm and ejaculate come in separate tubes? This could be weird. Let's see. Do the sperm and ejaculate come from separate tubes? Let's learn something together. Sperm versus semen. Uh, 15 crazy things you should know. I don't know. Some people use the term sperm and semen interchangeably, but sperm cells are only one component. Semen also contains substances from the prostate ew, and a pair of rabbit ear-shaped organs inside the pelvis called the seminal vesicles. Sperm cells, which are made in the testicles, need lots of high-octane fuel to whip their tails. I whip my tail back and forth. I whip my tail back and forth. Lucky for them and us, sperm get the fuel they need in the form of sugar fructose. So that's why... I was eating all those fuck. See, I everyone told me not to have a high sugar diet because I was going to get diabetes. Little did you know that I needed sugar to make my boys swim. So that's why I have two kids. High sugar. Give me all the skittles you got. Fluid from the prostate contains chemicals that cause semen to liquefy once it's inside the female. Without it, sperm would be locked in place and unable to swim. This is fucking complicated. One testicle is enough. If a guy loses one testicle, the other is generally able to make it enough sperm to create a baby. Often, the remaining testicle grows a bit to boost sperm output. So, if you only have one nut, apparently it gets bigger. It's like, uh, it's got to make up for lost time. Got to Got to get that big nut. I wonder if that's true. That's, that's crazy if that's true, that your nut gets bigger if you lose one. I got I got one nut, but it's just as big as two. Holy shit, the factory never closes. Sperm are tiny. Want to see sperm cells better on a microscope? Okay, I get that. These, these all I know is sperm need protection. I know that, too. 
Dead sperm can make live babies. Fertilize an egg in an old-fashioned way. Sperm need to be able to swim. Not so with in vitro. Okay, so what it's saying basically is a sperm without a tail is essentially a dead sperm. But if you're doing in vitro, you can use one without a tail. Um, How did I get here? Which way do we go? Because, no. All right, this is ridiculous right now. Uh, male reproductive system. Let's see. Oh, man. I have no clue. I don't know if I'm going to find the answer. Oh, something happened. Something just happened, folks. While I was looking up sperm, somebody lost their mind. I don't know who it is, but somebody lost their mind. Testicles duct system, which is made of the epididymis. That's got to be it. The epididymis and the vas deferens. Okay. The epididymis and testicles hang in a pouch-like structure outside the pelvis called the scrotum. Now we're getting there. This bag of skin helps regulate the temperature of the testicles, which need to be kept cooler than the body temperature to produce sperm. The scrotum changes size to maintain the right temperature. Yeah, so if you're hot and sweaty, you got the dangly balls. If you're cold, they come up near your body. Everybody knows that. This happens without a guy ever having to think about it. The accessory glands, including seminal vesicles and the prostate gland, provide the fluids. So that's what it is. So basically, the seminal vesicles carry the ejaculate, um, and then the epididymis carries the sperm. So it is a two-tube system. I'm an idiot for not knowing that. Maybe I should have already known that. But now, da 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 the more you know. I'll try to add in star, rainbow, try to get sued, you know. But then I'll do some dumb shit like, uh, I do not own the trademark to this fucking... <laughs> to this logo like that fucking why do I, I know i've ran about this before but it still blows my mind that people do that on facebook speaking of facebook can everyone shut the fuck up about bird box and a free ring doorbell like one uh, i've never heard more mixed reviews on a, on a movie so many people are like oh bird box is so good and then the others are like it's fucking terrible it's not original um the the ending is dog shit i've heard all of these things and i've heard it's really good but I really don't give a shit about the movie enough that so many people... And I get it. When something takes over, it, it just snowballs. Like, Orange is the New Black did it at one point in time. Um, the Making a Murderer did it at one point in time. So I get it. It happens. But I don't know. It's just something about it is just fucking... It's frustrating and annoying to me because I've seen no less than 50 Bird Box posts. 25 or 30 fucking... Uh, share your location with this person... And you can get a free ring doorbell. And it's like, have we not learned anything? Like, you're on Facebook. They've stolen all of our fucking information. Sold it. That's how they made their fucking mint. And everyone rails against that. Like, I can't believe Facebook did that. They sold all our information. Oh, but by the way, you can get a free camera doorbell. So why don't you give away your fucking location to download the neighborhood app so you can see about crime. You don't need a neighborhood app to find out about... It's like supposedly live... um, live crime updates in your area you just everyone's got that loud fucking neighbor judy timmy tommy sharon some white name it's usually some old white lady everyone has it and everyone knows that she's the person you go to you don't need the neighborhood app she'll tell you whose car got broken into whose son's on heroin whose daughter's a slut she'll tell you the whole entire background of the entire neighborhood you don't need to download an app and give away your location information to these shady ass fucking companies so you can get a free um camera doorbell like fucking look in your peephole i don't know are you that important or i I get it people get shit stolen off their porch like amazon packages stuff like that and it's fucking annoying it's got to be really frustrating but we're in fucking sussex county delaware how many people are just coming on your fucking doorstep that you need to know who's there i i've been at my between my house in dover my parents house for the past year maybe 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 10 times the door got knocked on the door got knocked the door got knocked on or the doorbell rang and i and i was very curious who it was maybe 10 times a year i'm supposed to be fucking so concerned about those 10 times a year that i'm gonna fucking share my location and get 20 of my friends to share their location with this neighborhood app like they're making money somehow you're not getting that doorbell for free they're taking your information selling it to someone this is all happening like this isn't this isn't like not known about these are very um, transparent companies in the way they make their money. They're selling your information. If it's free, they're probably using you. You're you're the product. Like, I get it. It's fun to share pictures with Grandma. I get on Facebook. I get on Instagram. I use them way too much. I look at them way too much. I'm fucking guilty of it. But at least I do it wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, and understand that I'm the product, that they're selling my information. That's why when I search in Google for my wife's um, fucking Christmas gifts, you got to... You got to do it in incognito. Your porn and your 
stuff you buy, you got to do an incognito tab. Because if you don't, you're going to have fucking ads about them forever, about everything. Goddamn, that, uh, that'll ruin a Christmas present quicker than anything else, is if you're on someone else's computer or on someone else's cell phone and scrolling, and you see some of the ads that they've obviously searched some things. Why the fuck are you on someone else's phone Well, you don't trust your wife? That fucking... Yes, I trust my wife. That's why we're on each other's phones, because she knows my password. I know her password. No one fucking cares. We know we're each other. Or we know what we're doing. It's not like that. I'm just saying it's one of those weird, shady fucking things that I think companies got to figure out around Christmas time that they don't curate the fucking ads to shit I searched, because it could ruin a goddamn Christmas really fast. Am I the only person that thinks this? Like, for, like, from November until Christmas. So let's say from basically from Halloween until Christmas Day... The ads should just be stock. I get they want to personalize them and they get more money off the personalized ads because people are more likely to click them and they're more likely to buy things. I get all of those things. But just for like a month and a half, can these fucking companies just back the fuck up and not ruin somebody's Christmas surprise? Because I'm sure plenty of people have had their Christmas surprise ruined because they were like looking at, oh shit, look, there's all kinds of ads for Dyson vacuums because guys are stupid and they buy their wives vacuums for Christmas. Or, oh, look, there's all these fucking ads for K Jewelers or all these ads for, I know, I'm a fucking plebeian. I go to, like, K and Zales. Don't shoot me, you fucking rich fucks that listen to this. I don't go to uh, some, oh, I got a diamond guy down by the, he's off Route 9. He's uh, he's, he's a good guy. He gets me, like, eye clarity. Uh, Real good, you know. One or two. One or two carat eye clarity. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. What's the best clarity? Let's look that up. Turn into fucking Google Podcast here. <clears throat> uh, clarity of diamonds. <laughs> one of the one of the fucking <laughs> one of the autofills was clarity of diarrhea. I'm gonna click on that one here in a second. Uh, diamond clarity grading scale. Blue Nile. Aren't you fun? Um, clarity scale goes up to F L. Uh, flawless. Oh shit, I is pretty bad. What the hell am I talking about? Uh, I three is bad. Uh, S I is slightly included. V S is very slightly included. Uh, V V S very very slightly included. I F is internally flawless diamonds. It's pretty good quality. And then the flawless diamonds are the highest. All diamonds are imperfect. We know that. Um, V S and S I diamonds are the best value. Um, just because they're pretty good clarity and you're not going to get uh, raped in the butt, apparently. Look, this is turning. You learn that your nut sack has two different tubes for the sperm and the semen. You learn that VS and SI diamonds are the best uh, bang for the buck. You can get man-made. I know people don't want blood diamonds. We don't want small African children being killed so we can wear a trinket on our fucking ring finger. Not me. My wife has a real diamond. I hope that, that three people died at least to make that thing. For what I paid for it, maybe four or five. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what lives were worth. They were selling slaves in, what was it, Syria for 400 bucks a pop. So that's at least, I don't know, nine or ten of them right there. Easy. So I'd say, yeah, I, I want at least three or four guys to have died to make the, the, you know, that's how I sleep at night. I know that people died to make my clothes, make my garments, make my trinkets, make my shiny things, make my phone. I hope someone jumped off into a suicide net. But the suicide net didn't work. It ripped. They fucking, they fell through. How fucking terrible would that be? You you jump off to kill yourself. You get caught in the, the suicide net. And then no, that you're like, ah, oh, fuck. All right, I didn't really want to kill myself. And then the suicide net gives away. And then you fucking die. Because you know when you hit the net, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, shit. I kind of wanted to kill myself. But now that I got caught in the safety net, probably didn't want to die. And then you fucking rips and you're done. That would be fucking pits. I can't imagine it gets much worse than that. Trying to kill yourself, realizing you haven't killed yourself, and then dying anyway. I, that'd be pretty terrible. I don't know. I, I don't have too much suicidal ideation, um, but I got to imagine if you did that. I don't know if you heard what just happened in my chest, but apparently I'm fucking hungry. All right. Let's wrap this up before it gets even darker. I'm talking about suicide. No. January 21st, um, I'm going to try to do another one of these before... The new year, look for that. Uh, I do have another football podcast coming out, so it might be rapid fire. Might be uh, this today, football Saturday, another episode Sunday night into Monday. I'm really excited to get back to do this. This was easy. This was a nice, smooth half hour. I'm not going to um, try to stretch these out into 45 minutes to an hour anymore unless I have a guest. Um, I, I will still interview a guest. Somebody asked me the other day, "Are you? would you still interview people? And yes, I would. It just got 
to be such a fucking hassle um, trying to make the schedules work. It was really, really a pain in the dick. Um, so I just quit doing it. And I, and it it's easier than this. Trust me, 100%. It's easier to sit down and have a chat with someone. It may not always be as, as funny or as interesting, but it's much easier uh, to just sit down and have a conversation with someone than it is to try to be entertaining uh, and curate your own content for a half hour a fucking week. But I appreciate you guys tuning in. And again, this will, I promise, promise be a more uh, recurring thing. January 21st at Irish Eyes and Lewis, I will be there. I will give you the time information as soon as I get it. I don't have it yet, but I hope to see a lot of you guys out there. And uh, go titty fuck yourselves. Smells like farts up here.